Hello everyone, this is HDS Kaski here, back with some more StarCraft 2 action. This time, I love the voice crack I had there, this time it is going to be a continuation of the last PvP series that we saw on my channel earlier, if you watched it, and if not, then this is the first one. But anyways, up in the top center side, it is going to be a Liquid Hero, one of my favorite Protoss in the world, probably my favorite Protoss on the team, Team Liquid as they are indeed an awesome team. Down the bottom left side it is going to be San. We kind of talked about his stats uh, in the previous game, how he's been successful in the past. Hasn't had that much success super recently, but is still, you know, made, made a couple bucks. Playing StarCraft 2 is very good. And, I mean, still is going to be one of the best players in the world. That's something that a lot of people forget is that even if you don't have current success in the GSL and you're a Korean player, you're still actually better than the majority of people out there because you're playing with the absolute best, you're playing on the most difficult server, you're playing in the most competitive and probably most stressful environment when it comes to StarCraft 2. So never underestimate any Korean player at all ever. Don't you dare do it because they have a training regimen that is so much more strenuous than a lot of the people that you'll see on the American and European servers. Not to say there aren't crazy good people on those servers, but it's always so interesting to me to see exactly how well uh, the, the Korean kind of underdogs end up performing. Now this game is a Korean versus Korean, and it's got my favorite my favorite Protoss in it, man. Uh, White Raw. White Raw's probably my favorite non-Korean, though. I, I gotta... I definitely got to admit that. Now, while this game's getting underway really quickly, I actually want to ask you guys a question. So if you don't have an account, go make one so you can leave a comment about this. I will be reading through the comments. Um, do you guys like me casting my own games? So when I'm playing on casual ladder games, and uh, do, do you like me casting those? My 1v1 ladder, um, like the, the Ladder Anxiety series. Do you like the fun stuff I was doing with Anaris? Because I, I, I just want to say, I mentioned this at the end of the, I think the 2v2 I just recently uploaded. I'm going to be checking the comments here on that in just a moment. But um, honestly, I want to have StarCraft be fun again, if that makes sense. So basically, I want to be doing the fun custom maps, the, the 2v2s and all that. Is that something you guys enjoy? Or do you just prefer the 1v1s? Um, we'll be reading through the comments. And of course, there will always be 1v1. I try to upload two to three 1v1s a day. And then I, I'm trying to figure out what to supplement my StarCraft needs with because I love playing team games. And I feel like a lot of you would like to play team games with me. So yeah. Anyways, we do have the uh, the Chrono Boost dropped out on the warp gate. We do have San not going for a second gas here. Same thing up here with Liquid Hero. But uh, I feel like both these players, yeah, they're going to be dumping their Chronos into that. But San is hovering a lot of energy here. He has enough energy for two more Chronos. Plus, I believe by the time he uses those two, he'll have enough for a third as well. So we'll see if he continues dumping that in there. If he decides to dump it into the Stalker as well. He has rallied that soccer to the Zealot, so they can both chase around that probe. Liquid Hero is going to skedaddle on out of there. And what do we have here? One pylon. Is it going to be multiple gateways? We did see two gateways initially queued up, but then he decided not to. And what what is he doing? He did tell it to make two gateways there for a second. And now he's going to go ahead and add those on. The timing of this should be okay. I do believe about 60 in-game seconds. Yeah, he, the timing of this should line up about perfectly. Although, yeah, then he chrono boosts out the probes there. So I'm not quite sure what that was. Not sure if he meant to delay those gateways by a second or two, but he definitely did need to get out that pylon so he doesn't get supply blocked. Seems like his opening is a little bit rocky here, but I don't think it's going to make that big of a deal. And no, I don't mean Rocky Balboa, man. Anyways, <laughs> we do have Warpgate nearly done here. Four both players going to be finishing up relatively soon, and he does have three probes on both of the gas. We have the same thing at Asan. Yes, we do. A lot of times we'll see players just do the two and two which is uh, mostly just for the opener, not anything past the opener. And what do we have for the units here? We do have three Stalkers and a Zealot for a hero going up against just one Stalker and one Zealot. So he really worked on getting out those early units. Now, by this time, those units were actually able to get out across the map. These will be upgraded into warp gates. There they go. And he can warp in enough reinforcements. Stop this. Only the one random Stalker here is going to get surrounded. I don't know if he's actually going to be able to kill that off. He may just stick that Zealot to chase him around. Kind of forced San to have to micro quite a bit. you got to remember, Zealot moves at 2.25. A Stalker moves at 2.95. So you can kite these Zealots endlessly. But they do have a lot of health and are able to survive a long time versus just one Stalker. One Stalker for a Hero here. Trying to get up the ramp to allow his reinforcements to follow suit is not going to happen. So overall, it does look like about the same loss if San ends up losing this Stalker, which I think that he will. Although I'm kind of confused as to why San's being so aggressive here. Ah, he does have the pylon set up here. He does want to try and warp in right now. Be aggressive off of this, I believe, three gates. And indeed, it is a three gate following up with a robo. So pretty standard three gate robo. Getting the three gates before the robo, though, means he wants to be aggressive. No, he does cancel that pylon. 
and is going to have to retreat here. This Zealot is going to get taken out. He really has no chance of survival and really no chance of doing anything worthwhile. Down he goes. This Stalker limping his way all the way back home as uh, I was distracted by this, this awesome layout they have. That is a ridiculously large medevac. Can you imagine if that's how big medevacs were? You could actually load up like command centers in them and like drop planetary fortresses on your opponent, which would be sweet. We do have the robotics nearly done here for Liquid Hero, as it is already done now for Sod. And he is working on an Immortal, which uh, honestly, versus what he's going, which will end up being the Blink Stalker, I think Immortal is a, a good choice, especially since he's going to be going for the expansion here. And I was kind of surprised not to see the expand first, as this Immortal is not really going to be doing anything for the first couple of seconds of its life, because this isn't that many Blink Stalkers. They can't, I mean, really, what can Hero do right now with just these Blink Stalkers? He can't blink into the main. He does have some reinforcements gained up here. So we'll see if he's actually able to focus down. He's doing it. He does decide to go for it. I didn't think he would, but he's going to be very aggressive with this Blink Sword and takes it out. Did not expect Liquid Hero to be this aggressive, but he's saying, hey man, I'm Liquid Hero, I'm gonna do what I want. Uncle Deckard, as Jesse Cax would say, and the Stalkers are gonna retreat out of there. And that's why I was kinda surprised, because he, he basically took a big risk there to take out that Immortal. Now, lowering the Immortal count is awesome, because later in the game, once these Blink Stalker numbers get higher and higher, which is kinda what we're seeing now, is there is more reinforcements already. Nice force fields there, we'll force the Blink back, forcing Liquid Hero to uh, kinda burn that cooldown, so we can't Blink forward to snipe any units. Need to keep the sentries alive, though, because there's not going to be Colossus anytime soon. So that means force fields are very, very good here, trying to control the ebb and flow of the battles. Overall, though, it is about the same resources lost, and you got to remember that uh, San does have an expansion nearly complete. The probes are going to be transferring down right now. However, as soon as this observer is here, this attack uh, becomes a lot more threatening, and he is going to go for it, sniping sentry after sentry. And sentries are so expensive, especially because they're so expensive in the gas. Stalkers, I mean, you can look at this and be like, well, the U.S. loss is favoring red, but you got to remember that a lot more gas is going to be lost every time he loses a sentry. And now he can blink inside the main. He kills the observer there. That's going to be huge. You want to use that observer to prevent the blinks from going inside the main base with some nice control here from Saw. It's got to be cleaning up these stalkers. They have to blink out as quickly as possible. But I don't think it was quickly enough as there is still units down here to engage. I believe that force field was thrown down by Hero is not going to have enough to throw down another one, but this will allow Liquid Hero to retreat. He blinks inside the main again. This is so frustrating for Protoss because, I mean, you, yes, you have the units to defend it. It's just they're so slow. And the Stalkers right here trying to do as much damage as they can. This is what I'm talking about. Ring around the buildings. This building positioning, unfortunately, kind of works against you versus Blink Stalkers in the later stage of the game. The probes right there trying to intercept, but this is exactly what Hero needed to do to get himself back in the game to be able to, to get his own expansion. Oh, this is so frustrating to watch. I've been here. I know exactly how this feels where just a couple of Blink Stalkers, the maneuverability is just, I mean, you can't keep up with it using the Peer Immortal. He might kill one Stalker, yep, and that's it. Not going to be able to chase it out. And the Immortals, I mean, this is, this is why you need those initial Immortals is because you want to keep them split up at your natural and your main base. It's something we've seen Protoss players do a lot. Uh, not not only in this matchup, but in other matchups as well, having to split up that army to deny drops, which is something that's very uncomfortable for Protoss, because your army is so much better when it's grouped up. So that's why you need the Immortals to be the beefy unit in the army to deny the amount of economic damage we've seen him take. However, his Nexus did finish sooner, so was he able to recoup some of that lost worker count? Not really. He's currently down by eight probes. Honestly, I think what he's going to have to do is chrono out his workers non-stop and hope that his opponent... Uh, Hero Chrono's out something else like maybe Zealot Charge, maybe Psy Storm, not Psy Storm. Psy Storm's terrible in this uh, in this matchup. Anyways, a Zealot managing to slip in here. The Immortal's like, oh no, no, don't you, you don't be coming back here. This is employees only. And he's gonna try and escort him on out of there. Finally cleans it up. But uh, I do feel like if San decides to Chrono out his probes, he might be okay. But really, can you actually get away with something like that versus Liquid Hero? It's gonna be tough. Now Hero does have his double gas finishing up before his opponents here. You can see just now dropping it for San. So San is definitely behind in this game and he needs to make sure to do everything he can to catch back up. I think going for a superior tech, trying to get his economy back on track. Although getting supply block, that's, that's not gonna help him out here get this probe count up. And you can see he wants to be making probes here continually. Apparently he wants to be making some pylons as well before putting those probes on the gas. But right now, I mean, at this point, Hero is going to be in the better spot. He's got his Robotech. It is at about the exact same second for both players here. But, uh, you know, that that's good for Hero. The reason that's good for him is because he's already ahead in the economy. So as long as he's keeping toe-to-toe -to -toe in the tech and the army size, then he's actually ahead in basically every single way. So his stalker's still going to be try to be aggressive. Even this observer might get sniped. That would be absurd if he actually found that observer. I don't think he's going to, though, as the angle means that this observer can escape quite easily. Thermal Lance on the way already 
for Hero, I believe getting that before his first Colossus even starts. That's showing you that he's feeling comfortable because he's realizing I don't need a Colossus immediately for defense, so let's get the Thermal Lance earlier for offense. You can see Thermal Lance takes 140 seconds, a Colossus only takes 75, so you're able to get out about two Colossus during the duration of Thermal Lance. So you want to start that Thermal Lance early if possible, whereas Sun was a little bit behind. Is going to be able to kill off that Observer, which is huge because now those Stalkers can't blink into the main base until another Observer is made. But uh, plus one attack, got to be on the way here for San. He is working on chronoing that out. And honestly, I mean, this is kind of what San has to do is he has to find something that Liquid Hero is not doing, and he has to chrono boost it out to have some sort of advantage. Now, plus attack uh, for the units are not as good in this matchup as they are in other matchups. Now, that's just not to say you should not get them. It's just how the Protoss Death Ball works in PvP is it doesn't benefit from the upgrades as much because everything has so much health that making your units do a little bit more damage is not as good as saying having another Colossus or having Thermal Lance. But uh, he is going to go ahead and go for the upgrades anyways. It will make his Immortals do just absurd damage if he can actually get that upgrade completed. However, guess what? Liquid Hero going for the OP upgrade in this matchup. Zealot Legs. It is so good. It's not actually OP. It's just an upgrade that's amazing to have because it puts the Zealots right up on top of the Colossus, right on top of the Immortals. And then it, it kind of takes the splash damage away from your primary cluster of units. Now we do see a little pro battle back here going on. I don't know if this pro going to survive or not. But uh, does take out the pylon. Is this probe going to go down? Nope. Might have actually been able to get there if he continued chasing it. But at this point, San has shown I'm going to be expanding right now. And Hero knows this just by based on the fact that he saw the probe down there. He saw the pylons go down already. So he knows that unless this is some crazy metagame that uh, San's trying to catch back up in the economy. We do have Warp Prism upgrade on the way for Liquid Hero. I do believe that is the Warp Prism speed upgrade. I always get it confused, man, because it looks so much like the Observer speed. But the Observer one is pointy. And this one is flat. We do have double Colossus production on the way. Oh, it's so good. I, I just want to say, guys, in PvP, if you're able to get double Colossus production, or in, in team games, if you're able to get double Colossus production, you are just so far ahead. You're in a great shape. The only thing you can really lose to is uh, a lot of Zealot Archon, which is something that can be a huge threat, but he knows his opponent's not going that quite yet. Or uh, a lot of Void Rays and stuff like that, which you don't see very often. And he is going to be going for a big drop here, focusing down the Forge. Leaves the Zealots for dead. I don't think that was actually worth it, but it is going to delay any sort of follow-up attack or armor upgrade. And that would have been sick if he actually managed to, uh, to deny an upgrade there, but I think it was already done. And Hero right now is going to be denying this expansion, though. Actually managing to kill off the probe. And at this point, San's realizing, I've got to do something. I'm actually getting supply blocked here. I'm not going to be able to secure a third base. And if he can punish Hero during his third base expansion timing, then maybe he can find himself in a comfortable position. But right now, you can see this non-stop stream of units out of San. It's a lot of zealots. How big is his army size here in comparison? Army supply is 112. It is favoring San, but is the unit composition favoring him? No, it is not. Way too many zealots. That's all he can afford right now, unfortunately. He does have a lot of them, so if he can somehow get a crazy surround on the Colossus, although right now he is going to have to worry about the immortal drops here. This is enough to one-shot probes. If you drop them right in the mineral line, they will do substantial damage. But, uh, yep, you can see two shots there, a piece to kill off the probes, doing a lot of damage, going to be able to lift these up as well. The Zealots finally game down here, but he dropped him in such a good spot that, guess what, no hole damage at all. He's going to go ahead and escape on either. So right now, all Hero needs to do is get a nice concave with these Colossus. He does have the plus one attack, so his opponent does not have any upgrade advantages. But uh, we do have Archons on the way for both players. This is a nice transition for Archons, to be exact. Now, the Zealots, they do have legs. So that, that that sounds so funny out of context. Yeah, the Zealots have legs. Uh, yeah, great commentary there, Husky. No, they have the Zealot legs upgrade to make them run faster. Can he do it? Oh no, he's taking some damage. A huge concave out of Hero. He's gonna have a massive, massive advantage going into this battle. Plus, he's look at the concave of those Colossus. Absolutely beautiful spread there. The Archons unable to do the damage they need to. Gotta drop the Immortals right here just to distract the Zealots and the Archons, and that is going to be it. That shows you how powerful a concave is. And PvP. Let's let's just. I know the game's over. Let's just go back. Let's just go back and look at how ridiculous that concave actually is. Um, there we go. We're gonna we're gonna hide this up a little bit because the attack should be coming from over here. And I, I want to pause it before the before the attack actually happens. But look at this concave hero setting up. This is seconds before. Seconds. Oh man, I skipped way ahead. That was a misclick. Um. Anyways, let's let's go back. Let's go back because we. I want to show you just how important that really was because he actually could have ended up losing that. If the angle was bad, he could have ended up losing that just because the army supply technically was favoring San. Although with that many Colossus, it's so tough to actually be able to kill it off. 
But uh, right here, he moves it down to the expansion just for a moment, and then seconds before the attack happens, he's got his army already split up. You can see him grabbing chunks of units here. He splits them up just a little bit, and then this is on the uh, on the normal speed that you play the game at. And look at this, spreads it out, gets him as spread as possible in tiny little groups of units. And this concave is actually absurd. And then he ran into the biggest death trap ever. Because this army was swinging around. He even had Immortals down here. I think he killed off the pylons. So there was no reinforcements. And then just running into a choke. Let's take a look at the army supply. 132. So it was favoring San. Of course, there was the, uh, the unit composition advantage of five Colossus to only three. However, I just want to say that four Archons is not shabby at all. They will absorb a lot of damage and also take away splash damage from the much smaller Zealots. So they were able... Uh, they weren't able to get in there, and I believe that there's only two Archons at this location, as the other ones must have been morphing in at the main base. But, uh, you know, this Concave, I'm telling you guys, Concaves are pretty good. We can watch it in slow motion, just the Zealots melting away. Plus, he ran back to try and get a better angle, and didn't engage the first second, so the, the first shots did go to Liquid Hero. Army Supply going to start just plummeting here. Right there, you can see that's where Liquid Hero actually pulls ahead in the Army Supply. Then the Archons aren't doing anything, and then, really, what else do you have left? Not a whole lot. So a huge engagement in PvP usually ends up costing one of the players the game. If it does end up going to the late game, who can get out the most more Colossus, who can get the better angle. And there's the re-GG. So we're going to go on to game number three. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.